trying out a brand new product today, the Ditch Box. All right, if you need to ditch, you got a lot of ditches, you're gonna wanna check this out. Let's show you how it worked on the Summit TX25 today, then we'll tell you more about it later on. So, as I tend to do, I'm showing you this product without ever having used it before, so I have no idea. It's gonna be kind of learning as you go, learning on the fly, which I think can relate to a lot of us out there when we get a new tool. Well, I make videos so that hopefully it's easier for you to understand how to use something, but for me, I'm just kind of dropping it down and making adjustments and, and seeing what works. And so, this setup, I honestly wasn't sure how well it would work. This is at the lower end of the horsepower range for this dish box. There's two sizes, a heavier duty one and a lighter duty one. This is the lighter duty one here. Now the really cool thing about this, this cutting point or this plow point that's on here is that it is adjustable up and down. You have a range of adjustment um, from zero inches down to, well, it depends on the version. I think it's eight to 12 inches in depth that you can go overall. And you don't have to take you know, you don't have to take all the, all the meat in one bite, so to speak. You can adjust this, and on a lower horsepower tractor like uh, the Summit for this tool, it's good to start gradual, right? Just take off little bits and make multiple passes and you get where you're going. And so for this total little project that we're doing, it's 500 linear feet. I added it all up on the Google Maps. 500 feet that we did, cleaned this stuff all out, and 30 minutes flat. And maybe you can tell by the dust clouds that are coming around, it is, it's been dry around here for a while. Uh, the ground is pretty darn hard. Uh, what we're going through is is just an old pasture, and you got to get to that sod. All right, that sod is pretty pretty hard throughout there, and so uh, the first pass is really more of a focus on just kind of using that plow point or that cutting edge to just kind of cut through that sod layer, and then the the, the passes, the follow-up passes after that, are where you can really do your actual uh, ditching with that tool, and so the. The idea behind this, instead of just having a breaker plow or something else, is that you're, you're collecting all of that material that you're digging out and dragging it along with you so you can take it and dump it somewhere or spread it out somewhere um, and not just have a bunch of leftover stuff on both sides of your dish that you have to go around and clean up afterwards, which is a huge pain in the butt. I do think it's worth mentioning that, oh, a year ago, maybe more, we did a video comparing different ways to ditch with four different tools. We didn't have this tool at that time, but we had um, you know, a bucket, we had a stump bucket, we had a rear blade, we had a backhoe, all these different tools that you can put in ditches with. And you always wanna look for a way to make the tools that you have more versatile, you know, and, and have them be multi-purpose. But sometimes if you have a really big project going on, you wanna have a dedicated tool that's just really good at what it does. So the learning curve on this tool really wasn't all that long at all. I mean, again, we did the whole thing this whole 500 feet in 30 minutes. There were two features that I have on my tractor that definitely made this a little bit easier and quicker too. Uh, number one is gonna be the hydraulic top link. We've talked about that before. I feel like it's my duty to point that out because it is, it's insane how much I use it once you have it. When I didn't have it, you just kind of make do because you don't want to hop on and off the tractor to constantly make adjustments to lengthen or, or shorten the top link. But once you have it and you can make those adjustments on the fly, changing the angle of your tool is, is so easy to do and so handy to make corrections instead of stopping all your momentum and, you know, and, and resetting everything. The other great feature, which is standard on the Summit Tractor, by the way, and our channel sponsor, is rim guard, okay? Liquid ballast inside those tires. That is a lot, hundreds and hundreds of extra pounds of weight that is giving you the traction letting that power from the tractor get through the tires and down to the ground and pull things along. You're gonna hear that engine straining. This tractor was working, okay? And you kind of use that as your cue as well. When you hear that strain, it's time to back it off a little bit, go a little slower. Putting in a ditch is not a game of speed. You just want it to turn out really nice when you're done. So let's finish up this project really quick and then go over the features and the specs of the ditch box.
Alrighty folks, so today we're using the LT version of the ditch box. That's what you see here. It's the smaller, lighter version made for smaller tractors. The original ditch box was made for bigger tractors like, well, it's not outside. I got it inside my big Kubota M4. Love that tractor too. That one will use the bigger one on at some point, but I, I honestly was more curious about using it on this one on the Summit because I didn't know <laughs> if the Summit had enough oomph or not. This guy here is rated for, I think it's 20 to 55 horsepower. The bigger version is rated for 35 to 120 horsepower, right? So this is at the low end of the horsepower range for the LT version. It does not use hydraulics. It has an electric actuator on the LT version. On the bigger version, the original, it's gonna use hydraulics, all right? More of the utility tractors are gonna have a rear remote on them uh, versus compact tractors, although the Summit does come standard with that rear remote. Um, so they put the, the actuator on here. Pretty cool idea, just hook it up with the gator clips right to the battery, has a little thumb control either way, just to raise and lower that. That's a piece of cake. Now this guy weighs in at about 275 pounds. The bigger version, the original weighs about 700 pounds, all right? So substantially more. This is pretty wide though. This is uh, about five and a half foot wide. You can see how much wider it is than the tractor. And when it's fully loaded with material, you know, after you've dug a long ways with that trench and it's fully loaded with dirt and sod and everything else, it's feeling it, man. It's a big load for it. Um, you know, if you can get a bigger tractor on here, like a, I don't know, a, um, 30 some horsepower tractor, that's, you know, if you're gonna do this commercially, right? That's probably a better fit for it. But if you have a 25 horsepower tractor, well, guess what? Proof's in the pudding, we got it on video. A few other important features I think worth noting, uh, the, the max width. Okay, so on the widest point on that ditch that it's cutting is gonna be 30 inches on the light duty version, 32 inches on the heavier duty version, and everything on here is at least 3 16 steel or heavier. And the other cool thing is that this is made right in the USA. You know, this is a small business here, okay? The owner, Doc, had a problem. He needed a solution. He couldn't find it anywhere else, so he went about designing it, developing it, and then selling it to other folks after they saw how well it worked for him. Category one, three point hitch, no rear PTO. And you're also gonna see, we got a red Spico on here. Made it right up very easily to the quick hitch, so that's not a problem at all. Now getting back to what I was talking about, we did that whole um, ditching tool comparison last year when we used the regular bucket that's on your load already, the stump bucket, the rear blade, the backhoe, all those different things. This is more of a dedicated tool. Now it, it I did try to treat it a little bit here in areas like just a regular box blade too, where you can really pull large quantities of material, move it from point A to point B. You can definitely use it like that, but there's no there's no rear blade to like dig down and, and, and push material back, but it is gonna naturally push material and pull material with it. So you do have that functionality going for you, as well as the ability to then lower down that plow point or that, that cutting edge and do your ditching when you need to. So really, I, I think that this is, well, if you're looking to do ditching, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a lot of ditching to do to justify this tool. It's not a cheap tool, right? But it is a, it's a tool designed to do something better than the other tools that are out there. And the fact that I did 500 feet in 30 minutes, I think that should tell you something. So it could be a tool that if you're a landscaper and you're looking to add another service in your portfolio, uh, maybe you do uh, residential development, right? And, and you gotta put in a lot of drainage ditches around there. You know, it could be on your farm or your ranch, maybe a municipality, golf course, um, road commission even, parks and recreation. There's a lot of different, oh, well, industrial or commercial applications too that could really use this. But if you're just looking to put in like two little ditches and that's the only thing you need to use it for, this probably isn't the tool for you. Um, I think it would be hard to justify that cost unless you're just really looking for something unique. And I say these kinds of things, and it's not the first time I've said something like that, but um, manufacturers probably don't love it when I say that, even though I think it's a really great tool for the right people. I just don't want you to think that I'm like, hey, everybody, go out and buy this really expensive tool when you don't really need it. It's, it's a great tool for the right people to use it, and that's what I'm showing this for. And for everybody else out there, just appreciate it, it's fun. It's cool to look at and cool to watch it in action. And maybe you know somebody that could really use it. Spread the word. So if you wanna get more information, I'm sure I forgot some of the specs and the features. We're gonna put everything on the website, goodworkstractors.com. Now we're gonna ship these factory direct out to you. Try to keep the, the total land it costs you as cheap as we possibly can. So to have them shipped up to us in Michigan and then shipping them back out, just hold them at the factory to, to ship directly to you. I sure love showing new products that have 
well, maybe rarely been seen. I'm sure maybe somebody out there seen this before, but we have a lot of fun, nearly 700 other videos out there. So make sure you check those out. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.